hard to believe that it's been close to 20 years now that Irish actor Colin Farrell has been part of our lives. But if you're a fan, then I'm sure you're delighted to see him cast in the upcoming Batman film. Although Colin may have only appeared here and there in TV series and films over the last few years, rest assured he's still been living lavish. And today, I'll be showing you just how, looking at his homes from Los Angeles all the way to his native Ireland. Colin was inspired to become an actor after watching Steven Spielberg's film E.T. and being moved to tears by it. He then attended acting school for a short period of time, but dropped out after landing a role in BBC television drama Bali Kiss Angel. Yeah, then, well then no, I landed uh, Falling for Dancer for the BBC. I did that for four months down in Castletown Bear and then Bali Kiss Angel. And then did it, did it, did it. It's mad, okay. yeah. It's I mad. know. Great. Great. That was the big break though, Colin. That was the big one, yeah. That was because I, I went to Danny. the 80s School of Acting for a year. Mm -hmm. Danny, Danny McCarthy. Danny McCarthy. And I went to the 80s School of Acting for a year and I left that after the first year and thank God I got that gig. Other bit parts in a few films and television series over in the UK followed before he exploded onto the North American market with his dynamic performance in the late Joel Schumacher's Tigerland. You try that again, you're going to be pissing blood, boss. After that breakthrough role, Farrell had his pick of offers and was commanding as much as $2 million per film. He became the lead actor in hit films like Phone Booth, Hearts War, and The Recruit. I've never done anything for anybody who, who couldn't do something for me. I string along an eager kid with promises that I'll pay him money. I only keep him around because he looks up to me. Adam, if you're watching, don't be a publicist. You're too good for it. Before he knew it, Colin had more money than he knew what to do with. He told Vanity Fair, I wouldn't know what to do with the money apart from just letting it sit there. People think it's from me being smart, but it's from me not knowing what to do with it. Well, Colin only remained so financially naive for a short period of time. He began buying up tons of apartments in his native Dublin, as many as 14. And while it's unclear if he still owns such an exhaustive real estate profile, the actor does own three homes that he splits his time between. Two in Los Angeles and one in his hometown of Dublin. Hey guys and girls, it's Kara here for you with a brand new house tour and today we're going to take a look at the three different homes of Colin Farrell, or as I like to call him, Bullseye. I know everyone loves to rip on that film, but Colin brought an intensity to the role of a comic book villain that had seldom been done before that. And he no doubt inspired some of the more iconic performances that were to come soon after. Anyways, I'm looking forward to showing you Colin's properties, two that he still owns, and one that he just finalized a sale for. If you like these videos, make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours in the likes of the new Batman himself, Robert Pattinson, and actors such as Jamie Foxx, and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and as usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Let's begin with the home Colin just finished saying farewell to. Owned by a trust that's tied to the actor, the house has excellent bones and fine historic features like oversized leaded glass windows that frame serene canyon views. This 2,736 square foot Tudor style home is located in Hollywood Hills and Colin originally purchased it in 2010 for around 1.19 million. He recently placed it on the market for 1.49 million, but he ended up letting it go a few weeks later for right around 1.3 million. The home was built in 1927 and has been renovated a number of times over the years. It now features four bedrooms and three bathrooms. Two of the bedrooms are big enough to be master suites in and of themselves. The one on the upper floor comes with its own balcony and the other on the ground floor has a white painted brick fireplace along with a roomy bathroom featuring a claw footed bathtub. There's also another bedroom on the main floor that has its own separate entrance and could be utilized as a guest quarters for staff use as well. Described in marketing materials as a world of enchantment and fairy tale dreams and chock full of original character, the inside of this residence also has dark stained hardwood floors and high ceilings. The living room features a cove ceiling with wood burning fireplace and a cute little study alcove. The adjacent dining room spills out onto a covered balcony with leafy cross canyon views. Nearby is a gallery kitchen which sports beige floor tiles and white ceramic tile countertops along with a sun filled breakfast nook and handy patio access. Out back are a couple of secluded decks and terraces which are all but hidden amid mature trees and a romantic tangle of jungle thick plantings with some remarkable Southern California style landscaping. And the home is just across the street from comedian Kathy Griffin's mansion. If you're looking at it from out front, you'll just be barely able to make out the top of this faux timbered three story residence peeking out from behind a secured wall that's covered in vines. All in all, it sounds like the type of home that dreams are made of. 
All right, let's take a look at the two homes that Colin still owns. After selling his Hollywood Hills home, it's been assumed that this property located in historic foothills above LA's Los Feliz area has become Colin's primary house. Unfortunately, specific details for both this home and the one he owns in Dublin are extremely hard to come by and pictures are basically non-existent. But I'm gonna do my best to fill you guys in here. Let's start off with Farrell's history with this place. He's actually owned this property for a number of years already. He acquired the home in 2006 for $4 million after buying it from actor Tim Curry. Speaking about the history of the property with Architectural Digest, Colin told them, I have a garden that is almost magazine worthy. It has to do with Tim Curry who lived in my house. Tim Curry is a purveyor of properties. He inhabits a house for two years and does a lot of restructuring work and my house was one of those. Tim lived there for two years. The back garden is really beautiful. He did an amazing job. And you know what? He ain't kidding. Just take a look at these pics. Unfortunately, those are the only two pictures I could find of this home, but damn, they sure are beautiful, aren't they? And here I was thinking Curry would primarily be remembered as the original It the Clown and his role in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But the man is clearly multi-talented and has one hell of an eye for gardening. Curry bought this place back in the 90s when it was only days away from getting demolished. He then spent years in a small porch restoring it to greatness. Inside, he decorated the home in an English country manor style. The 3,360 square foot interior reportedly also has dazzling city views along with multi-level entertaining spaces. Four bedrooms, three bathrooms, as well as a climate controlled wine cellar. Meanwhile, outside besides the remarkable secret garden, there's also a spa and infinity edge swimming pool. Finally, just a quick word about Colin's home in his native Dublin. It's reportedly a modest home located in the historic district known to some as Irish Town. Colin reportedly bought this home in 2003 and that's about all we know about it. Seriously, I couldn't find anything else about it and not even a single picture. So Colin must like to keep an extremely low profile when spending time back home. The one thing I was able to find out is that whenever Colin returns here, there's always one place he absolutely needs to eat at. Abra Cababra, which is just an awesome name for a restaurant chain that I can't believe I've never heard of it before. Colin loves the place so much that the owners even gave him a gold card so that he can get free magical kebabs for life. We had a, we had a conversation. Yes, about a, a restaurant that you love. Facce to facce about, uh, yeah, kebab shop. Kebab, sh what's it called again? How could you forget such a name? Kab Abra Kababra. All right, I think we're gonna end this house tour here. What did you guys think of the three different homes of Colin Farrell? As nice as the place he just sold sounds and looks, I really wanna get a better look at his Los Feliz home before I make my decision, because that one sounds like a keeper. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where we can keep the conversation going. All right, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.